Good evening everyone, this is Sharif. So today we'll be talking quickly about uh, the difference between Junos and Cisco's iOS when it comes to printing messages or log messages on your console or VT by line. Um, Cisco by default honestly uh, makes it pretty much easier for you to uh, know if anything happened in the background because out of the box if you have a uh, Cisco router and you put on the console cable and you started configuring it each time you configure something and if an OSPF neighbor comes up it just tells you OSPF neighbor blah 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 kind of came up uh, went from uh, full to exchange to full or from full to down if some, uh, the neighbor should went down so it's pretty easy in Cisco to know what's happening in the background. Um, Jumos, on the other hand, doesn't do this um, because if something happened in the background, it's going to be saved in a log file, but you're not going to see it by default. And honestly speaking, the log file in Jumos is pretty much junk. So, you have to specify exactly what you want to show uh, on the screen if something happened in the background. Because if you didn't do that and you just relied on the uh, default log file in Junos, you're going to be bombarded by extremely unuseful messages. It won't do you any good except for reading a lot. Like reading a lot. So let's get going quickly. So we have uh, two routers here, one Cisco and the other one on the right hand is uh, Juniper using Junos. So in, if we uh, see here, we can see that uh, Cisco router has an OSPF neighborship with uh, the Juniper one. Show OSPF neighbors and we can see that they're both uh, having uh, the OSPF state between them is full. So show root. Indeed, we have the 1.1.1 root coming from here. So this is uh, our ones loopback here. Everything seems good. Now let's get to the exciting part. If I went, down, uh, went uh, to the Cisco router here and shut down the interface, immediately you can see that the Cisco router is telling you OSPF adjacency, process 1, neighbor 222, on interface uh, fast 0 at 0, went from full to down. And uh, ultimately the interface that went down is 0. F0 and it was administratively shut down. Okay, in Jonas nothing happened. You just have to type show OSPF neighbors. Excuse me. And there is nothing. Show OSPF to face brief. And you can see that there are no neighbors here. So you want to know what's happening in the background. Okay, to do that on Junos, it, it consists of three steps. Okay, first is configuring the trace option flags. And flags is simply what exactly are you trying to monitor and put it on a log file. The second step is defining the name of the file you want to put that log on. Right? The third step is reading that log file and printing it on the screen. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Although it's, I, I personally consider it uh, unnecessary steps. Cisco's model is much easier when it comes to doing that. So. Let's go configure it. Whoops, T. Okay, now 
trace options uh, isn't found in the root of your configuration hierarchy meaning that if I'm trying to set and see here you won't find anything to monitor all the things happening on your problem right you have to get at least one step deeper in one of those uh, sections so that you can set the trace options in our case here we want to monitor the OSPF neighborship uh, status so uh, uh, let's actually edit protocol OSPF now we are under OSPF we can set trace options set a question mark and we have two things first the flag and the file we talked about so first let's set the flag or what do we want what do we need to trace okay um, it's pretty obvious here that all of these things are related to uh, OSPF since it has LSAs and stuff so we want to trace the uh, OSPF events for all uh, of those normal events what exactly do we need to uh, uh, I personally uh, prefer normal and event so and general events of course so um, let's take the general events flag general and the general events contains the neighborship status uh, uh, things related to when you're establishing uh, virtual link and stuff like that and it contains the minimum amount of information that you need so it doesn't flood your screen with unnecessary messages good now let's set the second step is to set the trace options file and if you, if you press question mark it will tell you the size of the file you want to put it uh, these logs in is it world readable meaning that you can anyone can see the log file I'll just make it short and call it ospf.log that's pretty good okay let's commit and quit so now show configuration protocols ospf as you can see under the OSPF section we have trace options assign me that the file to trace to uh, excuse me to save uh, the log sign is called OSPF the plug and the flags are general flags and these apply to any uh, uh, any general events that happens in all OSPF since it's in the upper uh, upper side of this section of the computer the third and final step is to take what's in the log file and put it on the screen. So let's monitor, start, and if you press question mark, you see there are lots of files here, but our file here is ospf.log. So now anything that any general events raised by the flags will be printed on a screen so now let's say no shot and the interface came up and the neighborship went up so now you can see it's telling you that neighbor 10.1.2.1 went from extra to two-way and now it's loading complete okay as i told you before it tends to flood your screen with unnecessary messages but at least now you know that the neighbor is up so if something happened while you're working you can now know that something happened in the background the bad news about it is that you'll have to set it up every single section in your configuration meaning that 
if we went to configure, let's show, we have OSPF here, and we set up trace options for OSPF. Okay. If we went the same thing for interfaces, we have to set up uh, uh, another trace options, same way, in interfaces. Maybe in another log file, maybe you can just aggregate all the logs from many different sections into a single log file. It doesn't matter how you do it, either each one in a single file or you can put one file and put all the logs in it from different sections. So if I want to do the interfaces, I'll have to say set interfaces, trace options, and then, and then set the flag and in the flag I'm going to say okay change events right then set interfaces based options uh, file either I can put it in ospf.log or I can make another file called interfaces.log and save as save it in <coughs> take much time here right so now you can see how we uh, we can set up I'll just uh, do one last thing I'll monitor start interface the clock. So now I'm monitoring two files which is OSPF the clock, interface the clock. If you want BGP you have to make one for it. MPLS, LDP, traffic and green tunnels, SNP, and so on and so on and so on. So at least now you have some sense of how to display messages on your uh, Jonas uh, One final thing is you can always show log ospf.log and see the log messages manually. So in case if you decided to uh, go and see some history why did this interface uh, went down or why this ospf neighbor went down, you can always see it manually like that. I hope this video was uh, useful for you. Make sure you hit like down there and subscribe for more videos to come in the upcoming weeks. Thank you very much.